For composite functions, uh, this is some sort of rule where instead of feeding something in x, you feed it an equation. Now that might seem a little bit weird. I'm going to give you some of the notation first of all. Now this notation right here, this is how we mean it here. Now it looks like fog, but it isn't. This is f with a little circle g of x. But uh, more commonly, you'll see the notation look like this. f of g of x. Now this may seem really confusing here, but this is what we're doing. We're taking an f of x function, so an f of something, but instead of feeding it um, just an x value, we're feeding it an equation. Okay, so this is a little bit like, uh, you know, in our little, our little machine here. If we had our machine that was converting, you know, it was like an f of x, this is sort of a rule here. And instead of just throwing an x in, in this case right here, so this is what we were doing before. We would take an x, we would throw it into an f of x sort of machine and sort of kick out some number. That would be sort of our exit or our output. But in this case, uh, that's just with a regular function. Now it's okay to write it down just to know that this is not exactly what we're doing, but it's like what we're doing. So instead of feeding in an x value and then getting out here, in this case, we're taking f of g of x. So what that does, it eats, so to speak, you have to feed it another equation. So an equation comes in, you do some more manipulation on it, and then you spit out some answer. This is what we mean by composite functions, okay? It's something where, so this is f of g of x, this is sometimes how it's written, f with a little o, g of x. Well, more commonly it's called like this, f of g of x. Now maybe this will help to see an example. So this is one where I have f of x is x minus 2. And I have another function called g of x. And this just does different things. Do you notice, by the way, I could have asked just, what's f of 2? And I could just say, oh, that's easy. I put in a 2 here, 2 minus 2, that's 0. So f of 2 is 0. That's kind of boring. What about if I say, what's g of 2? Well, then I could just put in a 2 here. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 plus 1 is 13. So g of 2 is 13. That's not very exciting, though. That's just doing f of x and g of x. Now we say, what's f of g of x? Now, the way I like to think of it is, uh, first of all, I like to say that this is, I like to rewrite it like this, this notation. I actually don't like this f o g sort of uh, notation like this. I rather it like this, f of g of x. Now, when I look at this, then, what I try to do is I look at, well, on the outside most thing, that's the sort of last thing I'm doing or the largest thing I'm looking at. So in this case, f of something. So what I need to do is look at my rule for f. Anytime I have an f of x, I would do x minus 2. But now I'm not feeding it just an x value, I'm feeding it something else. So instead of an x here, I'm just going to write it as this. It's going to be like uh, some sort of stuff uh, minus 2. I just like to think of it, this sort of stuff here. Maybe we don't need to write that word stuff, but this is the way I think of it is, this f of x rule here says that I need to take f, and what I do is I take some stuff here and subtract two from it. That's what f of x would be. But I'm not feeding it an x value, I'm feeding it, so to speak, a g of x. In other words, the stuff that goes here is this whole equation, this is g of x. So what I feed it, so to speak, is going to be 3x squared plus 1. That's what goes in this bracket here. That's the stuff. And then just subtract 2 from it. That's what f tells you to do. So again, f tells you to take whatever you see, subtract 2 from it. g of x says, take whatever you see, square it, multiply it by 3, and then add 1. So why, the way we do f of g of x, then we take this stuff, subtract 2 and the stuff that we feed it is g of x. So in this case, then, uh, we get that answer there. Now, uh, that right there would be the answer. Uh, however, maybe we feel like actually doing the whole thing. So maybe we're being uh, really horribly uh, careful here, and we actually want to do the whole thing. If you wanted to actually answer this full question here, you could actually do it and go even further. You could actually, because your teacher might ask you to take this whole thing right here and actually figure out the answer. Well, in that case, it's actually not so bad. In this case, it's just 3x squared. Now here, we have nothing to do in the bracket here. So we can actually lose the bracket, so to speak, and just say plus 1 minus 2. And now we can't do anything else with a 3x squared. We can't simplify that. 
but we can, however, simplify the plus 1 and the minus 2. Now 1 minus 2 is the same thing as negative 2 plus 1. In that case, then, that's just a negative 1. So it's going to be 3x squared minus 1. That's another way of saying f of g of x. So this is also correct. It all depends on how far you feel like going, so to speak. Now let's look at this next one here. The next next one here is uh, what is f of g of 2? So in this case, then, let's take a look at this. So f of g of 2. Now that just means then, uh, well, one way to look at it is to keep it as simple as possible here and say, well, what is g of 2? Oops, maybe I want this in black instead. Uh, again now. So um, I want g of 2. So in that case, what is that? Well, I know the rule for g. g just says take any x value, square it, multiply it by 3, and add 1 to it. So I could do it the long way, so to speak, and figure out what g of 2 is. In this case, it's going to be 2 squared, which is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 plus 1 is 13. All right, I could say that. And then I could say, well, then what's f of 13? And that's essentially what I'm doing here, because I want an f of g of 2. So f of 13 is going to be some number here. Now, um, I think a nicer way of doing it, though, is to take a look at um, what we actually have to do here. Um, in this case right here, what we can do is, so that's one way, by the way. What I prefer to do, however, is just use our answer here. So we have already f of g of x. We already know that it's 3x squared minus 2. In other words, I already know what to do if I want f of g of x. I have that answer. So if I want f of g of 2, I just replace a 2 here for wherever I see x. I put in a 2. So f of g of 2 will be a lot easier. It'll just be, we'll take 2, square that, that's uh, 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 minus 1 is 11. So I think that's maybe the easiest way to do it, I think. So that's an easy way, at least, to get about it. Now you could, of course, find g of 2 and then go ahead and find f of 13. And you'll see that that's going to be the same thing, because you can take 13 and you could subtract 2 from it. 13 minus 2 is, again, 11. So do you notice this is still the same answer? This is the same as this. Right? These two right here, they're the same. But I prefer this way of doing it because we already did the work. Now what if we had a third question with it? So this now we want g of f of x. Now let's maybe uh, look at this uh, right here. Well, the beauty of uh, computers is that you can copy something and hopefully paste it. That's just to see what we're doing here. Oh, yes, that worked. All right. So what I'm trying to do here is just to rewrite this just again so I don't have to keep looking back and forth. So initially I had f of g of x and I got some equation here. But now I want g of f of x. And you'll see that that looks different. Okay, so let's take a look at it. If uh, I look at my rule, now this is the outside most thing, so I need to use the rule for g first. So I say g tells me to do 3 times well, let's see, this is going to be g of f of x. It's going to be, I take 3 times some stuff and square it and add 1 to it. That's what g tells me to do. See, g of x tells me 3 times x squared plus 1. So I, instead of putting x, though, I would put in some equation, some stuff. So it's 3 times stuff squared plus 1. So in this case right here, then, what do I feed it? Well, I feed it f of x. So everywhere I see this open bracket here, I replace it with not just x, but whatever f of x is, in this case, x minus 2. It's going to be x minus 2 squared plus 1. That will be my answer for g of f of x. However, maybe, whoa, what did I do here? Uh, maybe, however, what you want to do is to actually expand this whole thing. So sometimes you might actually want to do that. If you did that, you'd have to say it's x minus 2, and you'd multiply that out twice, of course. And then you'd say that's 3 times, let's see, x times x is x squared. x times minus 2 is minus 2x. This is minus 2x. This is plus 4. I'm just doing this very quickly, because this is something that you could do if you really felt like expanding this. Then you get x squared. This would be minus 4x plus 4. Then you need to multiply the 3 times the x squared, so 3x squared, uh, minus 12x plus 12 plus 1. So in the end, you'd have 3x squared minus 12x plus 13. Phew! But that's the same thing, it turns out, as that. So these are the same. 